What's up? Welcome to Shell Tricks and Tips number four. I think it's number four at least. Basically a bunch of cool and useful stuff about the shell, about Linux commands, array of things that I found recently and figured was worth putting into a video. So to start with, something ZSH can do for you that Bash actually can't is offer you corrections on your mistyped commands. ZSH is super modular and it has options you can enable and disable. So the option for this is just called correct. So if I run a uh, set opt, correct here. This will enable it in my current shell and now if I type something incorrectly it will offer to correct it for me. So say I want to get the man page for ZSH but I spell it wrong. Well it offers to correct for me and there we go. And if you just add this set opt correct into your .zshrc configuration file it will run every time you boot up the shell. So that way you'll have this correction here. And um, it also works on your user defined aliases. Uh, so I've got an alias called lsbc but if I type it wrong, it will still work to offer to correct it for me. And just to be clear, this isn't, you know, any super smart correction or anything like that, but it will save you in a pinch if you happen to make a bunch of typos, which I happen to type pretty quickly, which means I type pretty sloppily. So I make a bunch of typos constantly and I've found this pretty helpful recently. Um, speaking of aliases, something else to show you. Um, I was using the cat command recently, but I have cat aliased over to bat. Um, but if I wanted to go back and use the classic core utils cat so without the alias disabling my alias all I have to do for that individual command is put a backslash in front of it that will disable any alias you have on that command so if you have something like cat or another core utils command that's alias to a replacement program but you need to go back and use the original for something then put a backslash in front and uh, this actually brings me to the next thing I want to show you which is a CSV file that I have and if I just use classic core utils cat on this CSV file it doesn't look very good. All of the spacing is wrong. It's showing these comma delimiters. It's not in a table format, but there is a trick you can do with a basic Linux utils command, the column command, and this will actually format it correctly. If you use the dash T flag for table, the dash S flag for a separator and give it the separator value of comma, and now if I run this again, you'll see it actually displays properly. And if I zoom out a bit, it will look completely proper there. So um, this is pretty useful in a pinch if you happen to have a lot of CSV files that you wanna just quickly get a glance of what's inside them, but still have that correct spacing. I happen to have a bunch of CSV files that are just named with like a date or something like that, or sometimes even a UUID string. So I have no idea what's inside them. And I want to just quickly see like what is in this CSV file. I might want to rename it properly or move it somewhere else. So it's, it's good to be able to just quickly run this instead of having to boot up whatever program I would normally view a CSV file in. So I find that pretty useful. Another command that I used recently is the F user command. This is one of those commands that's generally used more in a system administration context, but it is still worth knowing as an end user um, because sometimes a scenario will come up where this command can be of use. Um, so recently I had an SD card that happened to have a file on it that was still being ran in a program, even though I had thought I'd closed all programs that had files open with it. Evidently I hadn't. So I had to figure out, okay, this, this file that's opened um, from this drive, where is it open? What's the PID number so I can kill this problem? process and therefore cleanly unmount my drive. And um, just to remind you guys, it is worth cleanly unmounting your drives. Don't just like pull them out. Don't pull out your SD card or your USB stick because it can actually corrupt. That that happened to me once and I learned this is why you actually cleanly unmount things. So um, anyways, the dash M flag will work on your drive, your block device that's mounted. But to show you this in just a normal context, since I don't have an SD card plugged in right now or anything, um, I have a file of music that's currently running in MPD, which is the program that I'm using to play music. It's paused, but MPD still has access of that file. So say I want to get the PID number of MPD that's currently using this file. So if I look up the file, I happen to know this is in my music directory and I can just search up the, uh, the title of the song there. And this should give me a PID number for MPD. So this should be the uh, PID number for MPD there. And if I actually do PID of MPD, that will be the exact same PID number since MPD is currently using this file here. So um, the F user command, pretty useful. And um, I don't know if you saw it in the man page, but it also works with sockets. There's a lot more that you can do with this command, but those are just a couple of basic uses of it. And I should mention the globbing here with ZSH. Um, if you guys want, I will make a full video about globbing since I think it's pretty useful. It's, it's worth knowing about if you are using ZSH since it can save you a lot of time. So um, potential future video on that. 
Another command that I used recently, actually the uptime command, so a flag on it that I was using recently, the S flag will show you the exact timestamp that you booted your system, which um, I had a use case come up recently where I was like trying to figure out, okay, what was the exact time I booted my system? And I had to look up like, what is the flag on uptime to do that? Since the normal uptime command is just gonna show you, okay, it's up, you know, 16 days, whatever. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna get the exact timestamp, dash S flag on that. Something else that I have probably mentioned before, but is just useful enough to mention again and again, that is brace expansion. Brace expansion, especially when it comes to directory creation, is super useful and will save you a ton of typing. So say I wanna make a bunch of nested directories, um, directories that are all you know nested into each other, right? The mkdir command with the dash p flag, and then what I can do is I can make you know my directory here, and inside my directory, maybe I want a bunch of different subdirectories. So maybe I want like dear one, dear two, dear three. Maybe inside dear three, I also want dear four and dear five. And I need to put a race there in order for that to work. Dear four, dear five, and close that out. And now if I run this and do a uh, tree command, I don't know why I did test, tree on my directory there, you'll see this is all nested properly. And that was all done in one command rather than five different commands or whatever it would be. So um, that's pretty useful if you're constantly creating product directories or anything that's gonna have, you know, nested subdirectories. Brace expansion in general is one of those really useful tr shell tricks that is just worth knowing about. All right. so. On to something else more in the code golf territory. Code golf meaning essentially optimizations that are not necessarily that useful, but are still kind of, you're, you're sort of optimizing things for no reason. Um, that being replacing the date command in my status bar block with just plain old printf, which I did time this out. I did see how useful it really was. It saves exactly one millisecond. Basically every time I run it, which is once a minute, one millisecond is saved by getting rid of the core utils date command and replacing it with printf, with, which printf uh, in bash can actually print out the date for you. It has date formatting available. In the, in the reference manual, it tells you all about how that works. And I don't know, it's kind of cool that that exists, but in a practical sense, saving one second, uh, one millisecond sorry, one millisecond every time this command is ran is not that helpful. Um, but I should mention this is also possible to do in ZSH with ZSH's built-in print command, uh, print dash P flag there. And I believe the syntax is gonna be a percent D open brace and then just give the normal date formatting. So uh, I don't know, I could do like percent A um, and then close that out and do a, a new line there and then close that out. I believe this is the right syntax. Okay, yeah, so that's today's Sunday, there we go. So yeah, that's kind of cool that it works like that. And of course the formatting for the uh, actual date stuff there is gonna be the, the same as the formatting in the date command to, to my testing at least. So that's kind of cool that that exists, but yeah, no real practical use case other than that it's saving you maybe a millisecond by not calling the external process of the core utils date command. But I don't know, cool that it exists. Anyways, that's about all I had for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something new. I will see you next time. Peace.